I think it's been a uh, constant debate through the morning session when Shankar and Bharat were speaking about television versus digital. To the latest panel when Isha was monitoring that in terms of the debate between digital and television. What's largely going to happen in the near coming years? Is digital going to overpower television? <clears throat> Will linear television exist in that particular scenario? Will, um, com will television completely die off? So those are questions that are, uh, that are continuously coming up as time goes by. In this short presentation, we'll try and see how we can answer some of those questions and probably give you an insight about what's happening on the consumer side. Now, the interesting thing over the last 30 years that we have looked at data closely is that the universe tells you largely which direction this market is heading towards. And when I say the universe, it tell, there are patterns in the universe that is telling you the fact that this is what the reality check is. So if you keep observing patterns, and there's an amazing quote from one of the American freelance journalists and he's a novelist, who talks about the fact that there are patterns and there are more patterns. And within patterns, there are patterns and patterns are hidden within patterns. And finally, if you keep combing down to the smallest amount of pattern, you can actually start visualizing what exactly is going to happen. This is one of the things that I want you to keep in mind as we go along in this presentation. The second important thing that I want you all to keep in mind is the data exhibits patterns. If you intrinsically look at data, you will see patterns emerging from that. And that pattern will tell you stories about what's going to happen in the future. So patterns, sometimes we call it as chaos, actually, when we look at data, okay, because there's too much of data. For example, in TAM itself, in, in, if I go back 20 years, we used to look at around 1 GB of data per day, actually. Today, we look at 800 TBs of data per annum. So which means that one TB of data per annum has gone up to almost 800 TBs of data. That's a colossal amount of data that we process on an annual basis. So you can get lost within that data itself. But when you comb down to the smallest level, you see, and if you decipher this data, you're seeing the fact that there is a story emerging from it itself. So some of the outputs that I'm going to show you are those small, small little data which points finally to some direction of what's going to happen in this marketplace. So there is audiences. Three things that we're going to touch on this particular section is audiences. How are they changing with time? Therefore, how are advertisers changing, changing their strategy? Some of you all heard about it in the two morning sessions. And the third one is how is measurement going to change with time? Okay, let's understand how audiences are changing. And I think um, Anil rightly put it in the last session. Things have changed in the last 50 years. What was radio dominating this marketplace gave way to terrestrial transmission. Terrestrial transmission gave it to cable and satellite. And now broadband is intruding into the cable and satellite. So has this made the audiences change their behavior patterns? We went back to our database in 2010 when we ran a television panel. And we picked up a sample of those television homes, which was heavily watching television during that period of time, to go back in 2022 to install a couple of equipments over there to understand what is exactly happening within these homes. So therefore, there was same 2010 panel, the same members of the same home in 2022. And what we were doing was to catch two things, actually. One, what is the kind of uh, television viewing habits they have now, today, compared to 10 years back or 12 years back? And what kind of content are they consuming? Or are they engaging with on a continuous basis in what kind of devices? The entire thing can be summed up in this quad or the four cell grid actually. Okay. The first one is the time spent part of it. You see high time spent homes, low time spent homes on television. And on the other side is the engagement factor, 
which is basically governed by the stickiness to watch a particular content are you surfing too much are you surfing less if you're surfing less you're engaged more with the content if you're surfing more you're just dismissing the content and moving on surfing along quite a bit okay. and this is primarily on television what we noticed was the fact that in 2010 and an average consumer was spending around close to 272 minutes watching television and on an average viewing time they had 33 switchings actually which means that the switching was across multiple content uh, across the television viewing habits today that's not dropped down dramatically which means there is hope on television okay. the viewers who watch 272 minutes are still spending 245 minutes which means that on a core basis television still have audiences they have not lost them out they, those audiences are engaging with television the only thing is the fact that the number of switchings or surfing has come down which means they are more loyal to content or some of the content that they are watching are more engaging in nature they don't want to surf too much that is among people who are high time spent on television and people who are high switchers of television content if you look at them and understand what's happening okay there are two things happening over there actually one is that the average number of members watching television has come down or shrunk which means in 2012 the same television content on prime time used to be engaging around three and a half members or four members of a family today that's come down to just two members or two and a half members actually straight away cut down by 35 percent actually which means the fact that there may be members present in the room but not glued to television per se concurrently there are other devices also running in the home from where we are getting data from which means the fact that content is getting spread across multiple devices not with one device which was there 12 years back actually now look at just the opposite side the diagonally opposite side who were anyway low time spent on television and homes which were less switchers or just wanted to watch certain programs on television what's happening to them over there the 70 the 17 minutes that they used to spend on television has reduced by 50% actually straight away and whatever they wanted to watch they still watch a bit of it and that's it which means the fact that they are no longer interested on television per se what's happening they coming to television now only for some specific shows probably a cricket match india pakistan cricket match or probably a big news item that is happening in the news to catch that up so in a way these are the guys who have already left television or minimalist on television 10 years back and they are now more or less left television per se where is which is where is giving you the cord cutting largely coming from the other two segments the third segment which is the highly engaging time spent on television and but low number of switches which means the fact that they are addicted to certain kind of programs could be a gc could be movie around 209 minutes on television in 2010 or 12 has come down to 116 minutes almost half the time spent has gone away from television where have they gone this is where things have changed mobile devices intruded into that home uh, that has taken away time from television and i watch tv as elders have switched it on tv but but the thing is i'm just sampling the content that's it my attention is on the device somebody else has switched on the tv i'm no longer part of television actually but i am consuming my content on the device concurrently as much as the television is going on at that given moment of time and the fourth one is basically the low time spent or low engaging time spent guys but high switching actually which is more or less remaining the same actually. but they again come for solo viewing late hours of viewing for specific programs per se so the most important thing that has happened is television has moved out of these three buckets completely of audiences completely this is the segment that television is largely catering to so if you if you now go and drill down into that data so when we talk about you know television viewing coming down uh, 
what is happening to content on television etc you're largely noticing the fact that you're losing out audiences on three buckets so it could be interesting to notice therefore who are these profiles of audiences who are moving out of television and who is the score audience of television who is sticking on to television content even more in this today's digital world actually these are some of the statements that uh, came about the score television audience people are saying it so many people at home each with their content preferences i end up watching a lot of content in bits and pieces actually so i am not uh, there, there were a lot of influences that are happening in so therefore i am not able to understand what to watch but what i want to watch i will watch it here i don't get too much time to watch television so i am very selective about what i watch okay could be a cricket could be a news item i like watching tv and be involved with it which is what i watch which is largely the soaps or the specific movie premieres etc coming in and the last one i come late at night and surf across a lot of channels i just stick to what comes at that moment of time really some of the statements that came out were bit him from the discussions that we had now if you look at the preferences of content you see you're seeing this largely uh in f- multiple genres the, if i keep up the three big genres gc movies and news actually you'll see that the hindi gc is declining but on the other hand the four regional the four markets in the regional south are going strong still which means the fact that somewhere the the digital world has affected in in the hindi belt more than largely the fourth uh, than the four regional south markets actually if you look at the movie segment largely it has remained the same or even hindi has also increased in because of the kind of movies and the interesting thing about hindi movie genre uh, in television is that they now have realized the audience taste and decided to dub south indian movies into hindi to cater to that particular regional taste too news on the other hand again you see a decline uh, the while the south news is increasing you see a de- marginal decline in the hindi news preference in the, in the hindi belt now the interesting thing is uh between the, dig- the the thin line that divides between the digital world and the television world actually or the linear world if you look at the top television channels across markets okay you will see largely the hindi channels dominating the hindi belt marathi dominating the marathi belt so the language is playing a significant role bangla dominating bengal and the south dominated by the south regional channels now look at the top ott channels that are to which the viewing is actually happening across the same set of markets youtube 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 hot star hot star hot star hot star hot star there is no channel alignment like the way it's happening which is skewed to uh, skewed to the markets in the television linear side actually which means the fact that these have become brands where i get everything uh, it's like a, a buffet lunch being served depending on your taste and your choice of content you can choose what you want to have and that has pulled in audiences in these markets too so therefore if i am trying to partition an ott channel which is based on language actually like like the example of an aha um then the chances of success is very little purely because the big guys are already providing that particular kind of cont- language and content that is aligned to that local regional markets itself so so the learning from television doesn't really mean the fact that you will succeed in regional in the in the, in the ott side in the same way as you have done it in the in the television segment so in large when i look at those three buckets that i was talking to you about the audiences that have moved out of the television into digital and try to classify them in terms of profile to know therefore what are they watching and what are they don't watch on television the biggest segment for television in the future is going to be this clinging generation segment which is largely made up of housewives higher age group segment which is 40 plus age group segment which we call it as the millennials actually uh no sorry not the millennials is it uh, yeah the millennials which is 40 plus age group segment loyalty to strong program and they constitute 69% of total viewing 
on television. So this is the segment that is more getting aligned to television. The remaining three buckets are largely coming into these two segments, which is the, which is the trendy generation and the impatient generation. The trendy generation is largely made up of the Gen Z, uh, which is basically the 10 to 24 kind of age group segment uh, with very easy to break loyalty. They do, they're easy to adapt to new formats and therefore short videos are the in thing for them more than anything else. And the impatient generation which wants to know stuff at the press of a button and then once they get satisfied with that, they just move off. Very little spent, time spent on television itself. Going a little bit more deeper into the three segments, uh, the clinging generation segment which constitutes 69%, it has grown from a 2010 to 2012 to 2022, it's grown by from 64% to 69%. Okay. What we're seeing is they're slow in ev evolution. They follow a set tradition, okay. largely made up of elders, exposed to devices, but they're not so easy to handle, handle devices. Such. Therefore, very strong with television even today. Influenced by social media recommendations and friends, Excitement is in the form of strong story, aspiration stories, and characters linked to it. So if you have a good content aligned in that direction, strongly sticks with them. Not necessary to have big stars. They're not uh, phantoming big celebrities to come and anchor shows, etc. But stories are more important for them. And very strong in building. Once they like a program, they are there forever, actually. It's like a, uh, it's like a brand having strong, loyal users for itself. Okay. Primarily consumers are uh, housewives or elderly female, primarily consume soaps, content, uh, movies and regional news also part of the menu. If you look at the 21, which is shrinking to almost 9% from a 14% over the last 10 years. Okay. They're fast in evolution, opinionated. My, it's my voice that is important to be seen, therefore my opinions are important. I'm bored with TV completely. Uh, because the offering is more or less the same every day in nature. High on social media, short video formats significantly, okay. and very easy to break loyalty. Okay. Uh, available across day parts, while the other two are available more on afternoon and evening time, prime time. This is across the day, the, this segment is available. But, uh, now, but most of the content that they earlier used to watch, which was basically, um, you know, uh, strong reality shows on television has given way to consuming those reality content on Facebook and WhatsApp, etc., through the viral videos that come out of or the performances that happens on reality, reality uh, genre. The last one is the impatient genre, uh, which is fast, uh, faster than what you can catch them easily because they're surfing continuously either on television or on social media. Uh, it's a big event, that's the only one that pulls them in and they spend a lot of time during these big events like T20 World Cup or election time. And at the same time, uh, they're not so worried about excitement in the story but what they're requiring is things which are giving them high adrenaline action. So, uh, and they keep surfing between uh, devices, television and, uh, and uh, mobile devices, primarily youth and chief age owner. So that's the three segments that is, uh, that is largely uh, coming into the television play and digital play out. On the digital impact side, okay, you're seeing tremendous growth in terms of the hours of consumption that's happening. Okay. In the last three years, uh, we're seeing around close to 4.55% jump in the total time an average consumer is consuming uh, content on, on digital platforms. Already we have around 65 streaming apps with 60 million Audience, homes paying for it actually. But the average uh, consumption still remains around 2.5 2, 2 subscriptions uh, per customer or per home. Um, the rest of them largely are again the same profiles that I mentioned about uh, and OTD is also catching up. At this moment it's a small one, 80% is still YouTube and Facebook. Uh, if I remove the, that out, the rest of the OTT category is around 10% of the overall share. So the key takeaways on audiences are, the most important thing, what we always believed earlier, television 
being a family entertaining medium has now become a personal medium itself it's slowly moving into the personal space rather than a family space space that it was always associated with and which means the fact that connected television is not far away actually which which further uh, elucidates the fact that television needs to be personalized increasing connected devices leading to further far for the fragmentation of audiences watching and at the same time what we are seeing is um, television becoming important when there are tent pole properties so when you have a television scenario with 600 channels and there are few tent pole properties that attract the audiences the prices of those tent pole tent pole properties will continue to shoot up because that's where audiences are getting accumulated to so that's something that television needs to watch out for the uh, apart from that the rest of the things are largely uh, digital skewed in nature if you look at uh, the only other good thing for television is a subscriber today even subscribes to just around two and a half channels uh, on ott side actually while there are around 25 plus channels that he still subscribes to on the television side so that's a plus point for television to continue to create content that will strongly engage with audiences at least the penetration does exist for most of the channels conclusion largely is that television still has a max advantage between a fight between television and digital it's not that they have lost out to digital but it's a matter of time if you don't uh, roll up your sleeves and get things going along um, in terms of acquisition of good pro- tent pole properties uh, acquisition of good storyline for your strong soap properties which is basically focusing on the core television audiences okay, then the chances of the fact that you will lose out slowly to digital more and more in nature how has that shifted strategies for me from advertisers okay. now when we uh, you know in the beginning of the year when we were predicting um, your revenues for digital platform in the year 2002 and 2020 22 and 23 we were expecting around digital to do around close to 31000 crores um, on uh, at an overall level but the interesting thing is i was just reading the reports from facebook and google and google has touched around 25000 crores already and facebook is grossing around 16000 crores and if i put in the ecom advertising which is flipkart and amazon also that's doing around 6300 crores actually so you're talking about a 47000 crore only by these guys which constitute around 85% of the total um, uh, digital ad spends you're talking about around 52000 crores therefore exceeding what is probably television is garnering which is around 38 to 40000 crores so the question is the fact that probably by the end of the year we are probably seeing digital crossing television from an advertising revenue perspective 2023 if it's if this is the growth momentum it's maintaining it looks like digital may touch even 65000 crores so linear television definitely will be in a desperate mode to take um uh, take help to salvage revenues from moving on to on to uh, digital side if you look at the sectors that's moving the top four sectors on digital services banking and finance which is always there but consumer durables have been a major shift into digital that has happened and including of course education nature if you look at the forms of uh, distribution of revenue across different formats you see online video almost coming closer and closer to social media revenues actually okay. so video formats are a big thing and it's definitely making an impact in the uh, in the digital side and if i look at the number of advertisers that have got onto the bandwagon of the of each of the digital platforms okay uh, you have already around ott at around 10000 advertisers actually okay. if i combine all these guys which is almost around close to 150000 odd advertisers that's almost coming closer to print leaving television way behind in nature and if i look at uh, look at how things have changed between digital and television in year 2019 there were only around 1850 advertisers of television advertising on digital but now almost double of that is actually duplicating between television and digital per se and the same thing is happening with print okay print has doubled from 4900 advertisers 
on print and television and digital has moved on to almost 8000 advertisers on print and digital together so the, all this indicates the fact that uh, some of the strategies that print is already starting off like for example hindu has started combining the team between digital and uh, and print together to make it a composite team to market to advertisers those are the right trends are the right steps as we go along in the coming coming years between all india and south we are seeing almost positive growth in the south segment by almost 190 categories are shown year on year growth rates coming on to digital side so what we did was that out of these 100 and 200 odd uh, advertisers we picked up uh, our categories from where advertisers were going on to digital we picked up a couple of them as examples one of the category we picked up was actually dream level on a national level and one player we picked up from the regional south level to see how is how is it changing the game between television print with how is digital is changing if you look at this chart in 2019 uh, uh, dream level had a composition of 56% on digital and 44% on television in 2022 television has just come below 10% share and the 90% of them has completely gone towards digital if i go to the to the other side in terms of the amount of insertions that the brand is actually happening on digital it's almost climbed nine times actually and if i look at the drop in terms of the insertions on television it's almost on 30% drop in the number of insertions on on television and if i look at publishers that are being used on digital side 800 has jumped around 1247 publishers on digital while television channels which is at 84 channels have come down to around 38 channels in terms of usage so obviously dream 11 is still in an expansion mode uh, trying to build more customers to come on to its platform but at that stage itself they have seen digital not just from a frequency perspective but they are now it's looking digital from even from a reach perspective which is the real threat for television so what's happening therefore television is therefore getting consigned to specific properties that gives them reach bulk of the properties are getting knocked off and because anyway on digital all the all the each of the channels are adding on reach a bulk of the channels put together is giving a substantial reach numbers so it's a tv is of digital fight on the reach platform not on the frequency platform and the other interesting thing is basically uh, the way uh, things are changing again on the digital side from a video perspective okay? in 2019 uh, they had almost around 90% completely on video okay? here display has started coming to play also at the same time so video shrunk in an expanded budget video shrunk and display banners are coming in so it's more of a reminder a uh, that digital is also getting used to tell them the fact that going instantly because as the game is going to start and get on plug in to get um, get your teams put into put into the platform celebrity usage is the other interesting thing actually uh, on 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 digital versus television the the celebrity usage which was at at 62% has jumped up to almost 80% in 2022 and when i come down to the next one which is basically to showcase whether these celebrities are national or regional or even hyper local it's comp- while they do a bit of television advertising with the donis of the world and the virats of the world etc it's getting more and more regional celebrities and local hyper local influencers were getting it used as advertise ad, in the in the advertising communication to propagate the brand continuously so that's how things are changing uh, on big advertisers who have been who initially were very strong on the television platform and what is the yield that they got in spite of this change um, what we see is a 53% jump in their overall revenues for dream 11 and their advertising expenditure has further increased by 35% we picked up a brand from the regional four regional markets achi and we are seeing similar trends although i may say the fact that in south because as we saw in the earlier slide 
the share of television being still strong in nature in the four south regional market, in the GEC side, in the movie side, and the news side. The drop in television is not so dramatic as the way it's being played out in the national level. We are seeing um, television still somewhere close to 90% actually in 2022. That's a small inch of around 10% intrusion that the digital has actually taken up. As you see, therefore, digital was not existing in 2019. There's a bump up in terms of the amount of uh, insertions and impressions that they're getting from, uh, from um, digital. While digital has grown substantially, the drop in television channels is minor. From 106, they've dropped down to 100 or so, actually. But the print drop is dramatic, actually. They're almost half of it. So in this case, in South, it's not television that dramatically affected as was Bharat's concern was uh, in the first panel. It's print that is getting affected even more drastically than television. But the route that they're taking is very, very similar, actually. When you look at celebrities, they are also on celebrities, but they're using television uh, with celebrities. On digital, the share of celebrity advertising communication is pretty small in nature as of now. But the same thing, the change in strategy has not affected the revenues. The revenues are expected to jump by almost 90%. Uh, between the two, two between the two years, and their exp advertising expenditure is continuing to grow by almost a quarter. So these are examples. There are many such examples, but I just took two of them out to explain what exactly is happening in the marketplace. So therefore, if audiences are changing, advertisers are changing. What's happening to the measurement side? Actually, the, there are three things that are happening. One is in the creative creator side, actually. The number of creators continue to increase because of the digital platform. The content is dramatically growing four, to four and a half times more than what it was in the previous year. Content options are becoming increasingly more in the hyper-local level. Therefore, keeping a track of what is happening, getting consumed at a hyper-local level is of the biggest concern for most of the measurement companies that will happen in the future. From an audience perspective, CPMs, are going to shoot up, primarily because of the fact that audiences are getting pocketed into groups. There is no, no such thing called as a national audience anymore, actually. There's regional and hyper-local audiences in different pockets of the country emerging and synchronizing with each other in nature. So to talk to them, you will require multiple plat channels to address to them. And in that increasing number of channels, your costs per CPM will go up automatically. Audiences connected on different devices and therefore, uh, uh, therefore their habits during the course of the day itself will be continuously be changing. So for measurement companies, there will be a need to measure not just a linear television alone or one device per se, like a mobile. Even a connected TV will be important. A retail media outlet will be important. A outdoor site, a transition site, uh, will be important in nature. So, so that data comes from all places to synchronize and connect with each other. Okay. And from a distribution platform perspective, therefore, regional platforms and hyperlocal platforms will become very, very essential in nature. Not differentiating from a language perspective, but purely usage from a community perspective or a hyperlocal group perspective. Audience, uh, it's not just video, but audio will be as much synchronizing with each other to create that, uh, to influence that particular audiences. So therefore, when we look at measurement, today, when we talk about measurement, it's at the stage where we are having individual measurement for individual me platforms in nature. Okay. As we move along, the audio and the video will get combined completely into one single synchronized measurement. It's already being, uh, like for example, in US, Nielsen is doing what is called as a gauge reports, actually. The gauge report is a combination of linear television content and OTT content being measured inside the television content per se. In India, as TAM, we are starting off with radio next year. We'll be measuring radio stations and also streaming apps within the same homes which are listening to radio stations, which means that you can get a combination of what is exactly happening in terms of switching between the radio station and the uh, radio app. So a Ghana and a Salmon duplication with a Radio City or a Big FM will be the next first thing that we'll be doing experimenting with. 
And as you go along, what will happen is the census data coming from each platform will get fused with the data, the dual plat reporting platform data. So a, a video and, and audio combined together with the census data from the platform or the app will give you a complete picture as well as granular data about how audiences are behaving in specific pockets of the marketplace, consuming specific content, even at a hyper-local level in each. So in other words, there was a question about metrics, actually. What kind of metrics will actually happen in the near future? Reach and frequency will no longer be the only ultimate goal of a campaign, actually. We'll also start looking at, advertising will start looking at how much of the audiences were paying attention to my communication or not, actually and therefore build my reach frequency on the basis of active viewing versus I was passive viewing. So attention ratings will start coming into play already. Quite a few advertisers in this marketplace and in US use attention ratings to gauge and understand how effective my communication has been uh, within the population that is actually seeing my communication on different platforms. Second is single screen metrics will give, give way to uh, what, what we call it as an actionable ratings by looking at co-viewing between main screen television and as well as uh, mobile screens or second devices screens, actually. Okay. So click on website or e-com transactions will become a parlay along with uh, viewing habits. So where today, when I look at the connected TV data in a market like US, okay, the one that is giving run to YouTube is actually Amazon Prime Video. Prime Video is allowing audiences to shuffle between the content that they watch, the ad they watch, and to the e-com platform straight away in nature, just like the way they're slowly building up in India, like Flipkart and Amazon are doing. But that's slowly eating into uh, the linear television as well as into a digital platform like YouTube. Standalone platforms on digital, which is only giving advertising, just like the way television is actually delivering, is slowly going to down in terms of uh, value. And lastly, uh, in-home viewing is one part of it actually, but with digital screens coming on the e uh, on highways okay, and streets, what we are definitely seeing is an ability to gather data from these signposts and retail television together combined with the in-home um, television viewing and mobile devices viewing to give you a complete picture, which means the fact that what we'll move on to something called as a mobility ratings or linked with in-store purchases. That means the fact that you're moving into a situation where you're getting consumer purchase transactions in-store along with e-com purchase information combined with the data on viewing habits per se. So that's largely what I want to leave you with. Um, so therefore, if I look at the next 50 years of media as such, um, where we were in traditional TV, print, ra radio, cinema, etc., as single silo uh, platforms, we will be moving into an integrated media platform uh, in the near future. And in that, advertising is going to play a significant role, actually. So it's not going to be subscriber-driven in nature. It's going to be award in nature. And advertising will continue to grow significantly because of the changes that consumer is driving at and because of the technology that is making those changes getting driven up. PWOD will also be strong purely because of big ticket items like World Cup or IPL or Big Balls or, uh, or Indian Idols, etc. So TWOT will continue to be there, but award will drive that. And obviously, uh, MCOM or the mobile commerce uh, taking more and more in a bigger shape. But frankly, as I think the earlier panel also indicated, this is the direction the market is heading towards. Technology and consumers are changing to make that happen, actually. So there is no way uh, any, anything can prevent from not, this not happening. Measurement, obviously, and metrics, obviously, will come in along with that changes that are happening. And I predict that in the next three years, we'll have most of the metrics that we talked about shaping up in a significant way.